Hi, I'm Veronica. I'm going to show you today a short uh, sequence, maybe 20 minutes, uh, that is quite useful to mobilize your entire spine. And we're going to start lying on the back. So you can sit yourself at the edge of the mat and then slowly roll yourself down. And even before you lie down completely, it's actually nice to just move around a little bit. So you might want to maybe rock slightly, or even stretch and yawn, you might do just anything that feels nice for your body. So feel free to improvise and just listen to your body. And after a while of moving like that, you can settle in a position known as constructive rest. So you'll be lying on your back with the knees bent and feet on the ground. And it's up to you where exactly would you like to position your feet. You can experiment with that a little bit. You want them to be, the legs to be relaxed and the, um, your groins to be relaxed. And just settle here for a while. Give yourself a permission to let go of any unnecessary tension and sink deeper into the ground. It can take a couple of breaths. You can have a few deeper breaths for that. And then the first movement we're going to make is uh, really gentle, but if you have never done it, it takes some time to do it fluidly. So we're going to rotate the pelvis, rotate it forward and backward. So you're not lifting the pelvis. You can imagine that you're just rolling it over the floor. And our focus here will be actually on how the spine reacts to that rotation of the pelvis. So with inhalation, your belly will be slightly rising and your pelvis rotating towards the feet. And on the exhalation, the pelvis will be rotating towards your head and your lower back will come closer towards the ground. So see if it's possible for the breath to govern that movement. And you don't really need to tense up and definitely go slowly. The whole point is to do it as fluidly as possible. And if you allow that entire pelvic area to relax, that movement is going to travel upwards, up the spine. So you already feel that your lower back reacts as you rotate the pelvis forward, your lower back lifts off the ground, and then it comes closer towards the ground as you exhale. But if you let it happen, that movement will come higher up the spine, to the thoracic spine, and even to the neck. So you might notice at some point that your nose will be drawing a straight line on the ceiling. Okay, and then just come to a neutral spine. Maybe also very slightly rock your pelvis from right to left. Just a gentle move to begin with. Roll to one side. Stay lying on the side for a moment. And then push yourself away from the mat to sit up and move directly to all fours. So if you have sensitive knees, it's always uh, nice to um, place some blanket underneath the knees. And take your time to find a comfortable all fours. So you definitely want to have your knees apart, but it might be individual how wide apart or in what exact angle your hands will be. It's less important, but it's important that you don't sink that you don't collapse into this pose, you don't collapse into your lower back, into the shoulders and into your wrists. But also you don't really need to tense up. You don't need to keep tension in your hands nor in your arms. It's just try to be 
light but without collapsing. And always remember about your uh, extra limbs, which is the top of the head and the tail. And think of it that the, at the ends of a, of a string and the, you're just very gently tagging on both ends all the time. All right. And we're going to start with a very gentle movement of just the tail. You're going to move the tail or tailbone right and left. Very, very gentle movement, just at the end of the spine. And only if you allow it to become bigger, that movement will travel farther up the spine. So your hips will start rocking from side to side. And just as sometimes dogs uh, wag their tail so much that it looks as if it was the tail wagging the dog, you can do the same now. So this movement starts traveling farther up the spine, to the chest, and all the way to the neck. And you just follow the rhythm. Okay. Good. If at any point you feel that your wrists need a break, you could just walk them, just placing the hands at uh, different angles each time. Or even come up and shake your wrists. We're going to do a couple of cat cows now. Uh, first, trying to do it in such a way that we're starting from the very center of the body. So when we're going to curve up, it starts from the center and moves outwards up the spine and down the spine so that you create an even gentle curve that goes through the entire spine and you look like an arch of a rainbow and then again starting from the very center you move the spine in outwards up the spine down the spine and the head and the pelvis reacts to that so try it a couple of times rounding slightly on exhalation and curving but not to its maximum so remember not to collapse at any point as you inhale come back to neutral we'll try one more thing you're gonna focus on the tail at the very end of the spine and you're gonna start um, curving it upwards the moment you curve the tail upwards, your lower back will start going down. And then that movement travels up the spine. So your thoracic spine drops as well, and eventually you lift the head. Now we're gonna start it from the back of the head. The head drops, and the moment the head drops completely, your upper back starts lifting up towards the ceiling, and you're going one vertebra at a time. Upper back, middle back, lower back, and at the end the tail goes down. So keep on going, starting with the tail as you inhale, going one vertebra at a time, trying not to miss anything. And then the same on the way back. Or you try with the head. Head drops, and then you curve the spine upwards. From the upper back through the lower back, Tail goes down at the end. And you can try it a couple of times. Whenever you need a break, you can move around, you can come up to release. And just check how it feels. Maybe you want to do some more spontaneous moves in any direction you feel like. And after that, we're gonna sit back towards the heels. And you can always have your knees wider or use some props if that's gonna make you feel more comfortable. And then rest here. Maybe propping your head with the hands. You can rest for some time, focusing on your breath. And then slowly roll up and sit up. So now we're going to actually roll down onto the front or come down to the front in any way. Just lie down flat on the ground for some time. 
So you can lower the forehead onto your hands and stay for a while. Simply noticing how the body weight sinks into the ground and how your breath moves your spine. Now keep the left arm by your side, turn your head to the right and place your right hand somewhere close to your face. We're going to simultaneously lift the head up and the left leg up, but just as before, it's important that you make this movement slowly and that you lower everything even slower. Also, don't come too high. So as you inhale, lift your head and the left leg, not necessarily very high. And on the exhale, slowly, slowly lower. And let the body weight sink into the ground. Try a few times. As you inhale, lift slightly your head and your left leg. And as you exhale, very, very slowly, lower your head, lower your leg. And relax everything. Just one more time. Inhale, lift everything and exhale. Slowly lower. Rest for a moment. And you could also rest just with the forehead on the hands. Before you try the same on the other side. Right arm by your side, turn the head to the left and left hand close to your face. Inhale head and right leg up. Exhale slowly lower and relax all the muscles when you're down. Inhale, head and leg up. Exhale, try to lower slower. And release. Last time. Inhale up. Exhale, lower. Let all the muscles rest. And again, rest with the forehead on the head. Rock from right to left. Rock the hips. forearms on the ground and it might be a little bit too much for your lower back sometimes so you could try always to move your elbows farther forward or just stay with the uh, elbows underneath the uh, shoulders so you decide where exactly the elbows will be depending on how your lower back fits and then make your fingertips really active. So you're trying to move the fingers forward, but without actually moving them from the spot. As if they wanted to move forward, but they couldn't. And that creates a lift, creates a lift between the shoulder blades, in the shoulders, move your shoulders away from the ears. So it actually, you don't really need to tense up anything in the body. It's just those fingers that are doing it for you. You're also feeling that the weight rests on your uh, pubic bone. And the head, you're not dropping it back, you're not throwing it back. You always remember about that conversation between the top of the head and the tail, wherever you might be. And stay active with fingertips reaching forward. It might feel like quite an effort for the arms, but actually it's more restful for your spine. And then slowly, slowly come down and again rest with the forehead on the hands. You can rock a bit. Place the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck. Maybe tuck the toes under, maybe not. Whatever feels better for your feet. And 
Again, sit back into the child's pose, or your comfortable version of child's pose, wherever it might be, however high, at which angle exactly, somewhere where you can fully rest. And stay for some time, breathing to your lower back. You might come back to all fours just for a moment. Do a couple of cat cows, more freestyle, but just notice if there's already some more movement, some more freedom in the spine. And if your body tells you to do any other movement, go ahead and do it. We're going to move now to the last part. And we're going to roll down just one more time for a very easy spinal twist. We're coming back to a constructive rest. Find the ideal position for your legs. And then move your arms out into T-shape with palms turned up. Start moving your knees from side to side. So make sure that you don't change the position of your feet, the feet stay in the same position and you just let your knees completely relax, drop from side to side. And then add to that the movement of your head. So if your knees drop to the right, your head turns to the left and the other way around. Just as before, you want to make this movement really smooth and easy without any unnecessary effort or tension. Try to synchronize the moves so that the knees and the head meet exactly in the center. Keep on going for some time. Noticing if the entire body is engaged. And choose the rhythm of the breath that works for you. Come back to the center. You can have now your arms somewhere closer to the body, anywhere that is going to feel comfortable for you. Notice any difference in your breath, in the spine itself. And you can stay for some time in the constructive rest where you are right now. Or you might want to choose stretch out the legs and stay with your legs straight. So your choice, but just make sure that if you are in constructive rest, that your legs and groins are completely relaxed. And you're simply giving your weight down. You might close your eyes again and maybe notice that the breath alone is enough to move your bones, including your spine. Even if it's just a really gentle pelvic tilt that you're gonna notice, or maybe some opening in the shoulders. So make sure that you rest for a moment, that you give yourself time to process all those poses before you roll to the side again. And from there you can just come up. Thank you.